Hi there, little chicken nuggets. Me, Carl. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Grow TV. I'm assuming all of y'all are doing well and having a great time. Anything interesting happened in your life late, re uh, recently? Huh. <laughs> oh wow, really? That's crazy. I would have, really, I, I would have never expected to, to hear that. <laughs> wow. Oh, what's that? Did anything interesting happen in my life recently? Well, nothing's popping in my head right now. Oh, well, I did find a couple of interesting things when I was doing aerobics in my living room the other night. First, I found a nickel, thought it was a limited edition silver dollar, but one bite test and one chip tooth later, turns out it was just a nickel. But then, you won't believe what I found. Isn't this incredible? <laughs> I mean, come on. Wait, do you know what this is? You don't, do you? <laughs> oh my goodness, you think this is just some ordinary piece of paper? Are you kidding? This is so much more. What do you think it is? Do you think it's a treasure map or a recipe for the most perfect donut ever? It's a treasure map. Good job. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a treasure map. A map of treasure. Do you know how insane this is? This means that there is a giant chest of treasure just sitting somewhere out there in the world, just waiting to be discovered. And guess who has the only map to it? No, not my mom. Me. I'm the only one with the map, and I'm gonna head out to go find it. Whoa, hold on there, Carl. Ah! Who said that? It's me, Andrew. You know, your new friend? Oh, that's right, how's it going? Good, man, how are you? Pretty decent now that I'm on the hunt for buried treasure. Yeah, about that, Carl. I think you're gonna have to hold off for a second. What? Why? Well, not everyone can search for buried treasure. There's only one type of person who does that. And do you know who that is? Old man Hutchins on the beach with a metal detector? Um, no, it's pirates, Carl. Pirates? Yep, well, pirates, they're different, and I'm not sure you're gonna wanna do that. Oh, well, I guess I'm gonna have to choose. Be a pirate or not? I guess so. Oh, wow, this is gonna be tough. All right, well, I think you need some time to make your decision. I'll come back and I'll check in on you soon, okay? All righty. Well, I don't know about you, but I think Carl has a really huge choice to make. You see, if you don't know anything about pirates, let me share with you some interesting facts. Well, I've never met a real pirate, but the ones I see on TV, they don't seem very wise to me. They do whatever they want and they don't care about the rules. It seems like they don't worry about brushing their teeth or washing anything really. If one gets mad because someone did something they didn't like, well, they might just send the other pirate down the plank into a sea of sharks. There has to be a pirate out there that isn't constantly making a mess of things. But from what I can see, the future isn't too bright. And just like Carl has a really big choice to make, we're faced with choices every single day. Some of them are not really important, like choosing what to eat for breakfast or maybe picking what shirt to wear. But some choices are very important. Friends we choose to play with, the way we choose to spend our time, and the rules we choose to follow all point to one big choice to be wise or unwise. And the answer to that comes from knowing what the Bible says. Take Carl, for example. If Carl chooses to be a pirate, that might be the unwise way to go. Here's something cool from the book of Proverbs, chapter 22. Verses one and two say, a good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. A pirate might have a serious argument with this. God is saying it's better to have a good name, a good reputation for loving others well, than to have gobs of money in the bank. Then later on in the same chapter, King Solomon, the writer of the wisdom we're learning now, says that the generous will be blessed when they share what they have with the poor. Well, I see your point, but it might feel better to choose a side. Sometimes we like choosing our own side. I like my own side. It smells good over here. You're probably right. It's what pirates do. They pick a side and probably hurt the people that need help. That's right. Later in the same chapter, it talks about not taking advantage of anyone. Choosing a side to benefit yourself or to get out of trouble, that's not what's best. In fact, it's unwise. So what do you think, kids? Should Carl become a pirate? You've chosen wisely. So while we can kind of be like pirates and have fun fishing or searching for buried treasure or hanging out with our friends, we should first choose to be wise. 
And to be wise is knowing what is right and what is wrong and choosing what is best. And choosing favorites or sides is never wise. Switch. All right, kids, it is time for our big idea. And our big idea today is I can be wise by not choosing sides. Now we have to say it very, very loud. Let's make it so loud everyone next to us can hear us, okay? All right, ready? One, two, three. I can be wise by not choosing sides. There we go. Nailed it. See, I could even hear you. That was really, really good. All right, well, I think Carl has had enough time in order to make a decision, don't you think? All right, let's see if Carl's available. Carl! Hey, everybody. After much thought and wisdom seeking, I think I've made a decision. I'm gonna be a pirate, y'all! What? Carl, we, we, we just talked about this. Don't worry, Andy. I know, I'm gonna, I know what I'm doing. It's gonna be fun. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of...